It's Video Tuesday. Welcome back to Great Photography and Video on a Budget. I'm George E. Harrison. As always, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this photographic journey. Now, remember Friday, we was talking about small sensor cameras and how they don't, depends on the lens you use, you know, how far you are away from the subject, they don't have the greatest depth of field. But, you know, I was talking about don't worry as much about what's in the background as you worry about what's in the foreground. So, in the day, I'm going to give you some more tips. I try to use you know, to work around maybe not having the greatest depth of field. So with the help of my trusty Micro Four Thirds camera and my with the F4 lens that I was using, because it's 14 to 150, I was shooting at F4.5 to be exact, one speed flash, a correction speed light, and the help of two friends, Twyla from Elon University and Akia from UNC. I'm gonna give you a little tips that, you know, I use, that I use. Now these tips can be used for either small individuals or small groups, because it's applied for both of them. So let's turn to the computer and see what we came up with. This is Twyla from Elon University. You met her last week. And this is Akia, a friend from UNC. As you can see, I don't have the greatest depth of field, the real, real blow that bur blurry background back here, but this is why the speed light comes in handy. With the speed light, you see I, I lit the faces, I was, you know, and it and makes them, separates them from the background and they pop. So yes, I would like more greater depth of field back here, correction, more of a blurry background, but that wasn't available with my camera, the lens, but by using the speed, speed flash and lighting their faces, it, it separates them and they kind of like, st and they stand out from the background. Because remember, this beautiful face, and this beautiful face is what you want. This is what you want to concentrate on. If people are worried, worried about this background, you know, they have two beautiful young ladies here, and you're looking at more at the background than them, then I did a solid job, and all the blurry background in the world is not going to help. So remember, this is what you want. Now, this is an example you might have to take at a family reunion or somewhere where someone's, hey, you know, grab a shop with me and my friend. Again, you know, you, it, yes, it'd be nice if you could have this brick out of focus, a little bit more out of focus, but as long as the faces and things are sharp, that's what you want to concentrate on because this is what you want people to add and draw to. And again, this is why the speed light comes in handy. By setting the speed light over here right to the left, it lights up their faces and brightens them up and it separates them from the background. This is another example where you might have to grab, you know, you, have to, you still have the family reunion, they want a few more pictures, so that's why the speed light comes in handy. Again, by lighting up their faces, it makes their faces pop. You, know, you can see their eyes, because remember when they were doing a face picture, the eyes, the eyes is what you want sharp and well defined. Yes, it would have been nice if this was a little bit more out of focus, but again, this is what you want, and that's why the, the speed light comes in handy. It, it, Pops the faces, the faces just pop out from the background, and people's attention gonna be drawn to that, not to the background. Okay, we still at the family reunion, and at this time maybe just uh, Twilight just wanted a picture by herself. But as you see, a kid is back in the background. What you don't see, a kid is talking to a friend of hers right here. So you at a family reunion, you want to be nice and social. So sociable, so you're not going to ask Kia and her friend to move out of the picture. So this is why your flash comes in handy. You focus on her, you use the speed light, and she pop, and see the way she pops out? Yes, you know a key is back there, but the way uh, uh, Twilight is lit, your eyes is drawn to her. So yes, the background is not as blurry as you, as you wanted to, but by using the speed light and concentrate on here, because remember your eyes go to the most dominant thing in the picture. And this is the most, this young lady right here is the most dominant thing in the picture, so your eyes are going to be drawn to hair. That's what it comes in handy with the speed light. Here's a different type of example of someone in the background, you know, concentrating, maybe talking to a friend or just, you know, just wondering about life. As you can see, yes, it's not as out of focus as you would like. And actually, the background is probably a little bit brighter than it should be, but sometimes that can, that can help. But through the, through the use of a speed light, by lighting her, she still pops out, although this background is bright, she still pops out from the background, and it, and it, it turns out to turn, be pretty good, because remember, this is, what, this is the face you want. And like I said earlier, if, if you caption a beautiful person, on, a picture of a beautiful person, and they're looking at the background, instead of that, instead of that beautiful person, regardless of how, what the background looks like, you've done a, a bad job. So yes, it, this could have been a little darker, but sometimes in certain situations, you grab the picture while you can, and the circumstances 
when you can. That's why it's always good if possible to have a speed light with you at all situations. You might not have to use it, but a lot of days like this, you know, bright sun or shade, it comes in handy. Because remember, you want these right here, these eyes. Whenever you do a head shot, a, a, a three quarter shot, a head and shoulder shot, the eyes are the most important thing. You want to see these eyes. Now again, this is a shot where I cheated a little. On this head and shoulder shot, I shot a little bit wider and cropped in, so that gives you a little bit more blur in the background. But remember, this is, this is not what you're worried about. This is the main thing you're worried about. And this is why the speed light come, came in handy. You know, fill the face in, it separated her you know, from the background, and you see, see these beautiful eyes. Because when you, whenever you do a face shot, remember, the eyes are the most important, because like I said earlier, the eyes are the winner to the soul. And I'm going to say this again, this is what you want to concentrate on. If, I, if you have a good looking person like, like Twyla is right here, a uh, key I showed you earlier, and people are looking at the background, say, oh man, that background's not out of focus, then that means you did a sorry job as a photographer. Because this is what you want people to look at and remember. You want them to say, oh well, that's a nice looking young lady. Not, hey, the background's not blurry enough. So remember, no matter what, concentrate on the image. Concentrate on this and don't worry about the background. Yes, you do worry about the background to a degree. If she had a post sticking out of her head, a tree or something, that you want to worry about. But you can't always get all the blurriness, but you can worry about things like that. But once you get those out of the way, just concentrate on this right here and your photography will be a lot easier. Well, it might not be easy, but it'll be less stressful. Okay, this is going to be my last shot for today. And yes, it it would have been a little bit more if this background was a little bit blurrier, but one way I did get as blurry as it is, on this head and shoulder shot, you shoot a little bit wider, then crop in, that will help you a little bit with your background blur. But remember, this is what you want. This is the most important thing right here. And that's why the speed flash came in handy. Speed light, I should say, a speed flash is either way, interchangeable, you know what I mean. Because it, it separates hair from the background, it makes it stand out, and it lights these beautiful eyes. Because remember, I said it before and I said it again, the, the eyes are the, are the windows to the soul, and whenever you're doing a headshot, three quarters, any shot of a person, you want their eyes to stand out. So if someone's looking at a picture like this, you know, you got a good looking young lady right here in the frame, and someone's saying, well, you know, I wish you had a blurry background, well then you've done a sorry, sorry job as a photographer. I don't care how blurry your background is, this is what you concentrate on. Yes, you do worry about a background to a degree. You don't want a light post sticking out of a head. You don't want a tree sticking out of a head. Things, uh, trash cans and things like that in the background. But besides that, don't worry about it. Concentrate on this right here. It's the face that you really want to concentrate. You want a good expression. You want to make sure it's sharp and in focus. I mean, as long as you do that, it might not make your photographer easier, but it will make your photographer less stressful. And that's what we're trying to do as a photographer. We want to get back to the fun part. Sometimes you cannot eliminate the stress, but let's not build up stress on our own. Let's concentrate on this. Because everyone's not going to have that 1.2 lens or that full frame camera. So but like I said, work with what you have. You know, don't worry about what someone else has. Work with what you have to get the images you can. Well, I hope those tips give you some ideas how you can work around, you know, maybe perceived lack of depth of field. And if you have any ideas how you get around it, leave them in the comment section. Because remember, no one knows everything about photography. And once, if we share all ideas, all of us can get on this train and go on down the track. And as usual, I want to thank you for joining me on this photographic journey. I'm George G. Harrison, the great photography and video on the budget. And you know, normally I like to leave you with a song. I haven't done it a line from a song to motivate you, and I haven't did it for the last two times, so I want to get back to that. And know what you're thinking, why song? Simple. Photography and music is universal. It's understood all over the world. So in the song I want to use today, I'm going to pull a line out. It's from Chris Stapleton. He's, he's telling us all the time, pick up your camera, go on outside, and find something that is smooth as Tennessee whiskey, and you know it's going to be sweet as strawberry wine when you capture it. So get up right now, grab your camera, walk on out the door, and start taking pictures. And I'll see you Tuesday. Correction, I, today is Tuesday. I'll see you Friday.